Hello everyone, this is Ravina. Welcome back to Pseudocoder. Today we are going to talk about lead code problem number 49, which is group anagrams. Uh, this problem I have seen a couple of times in Amazon. So uh, please watch the videos that you can, you know, if you are asked about it, then you can solve this problem in this uh, interview. So let's start by uh, reading the problem here. It says, given an array of strings, uh, group the anagrams together. You can return the answer in, in any order. The anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all the original letters exactly once. So let's see what it means. Uh, let's go to our notepad and understand what an anagram is really, really is. So anagram is basically a word where you can rephrase the letters and still uh, get a new word, but with the same letters. So the simple anagram example will be eat and eight. So if you look at eat, you will say that e is exactly uh, uh, is uh, occurred exactly once. A has occurred exactly once, and T has occurred exactly once. This is for eat. Whereas at eight, you'll see that A is uh, occur has occurred once, T has occurred once, and E has also occurred once. If you look at these two words. They are different words, but made with the same letter and same number of occurrences of that letter. And that makes them an anagram. Oops, spelling mistake. Yeah, so that makes this an anagram. So now we know what an anagram is. Let's try and see what this problem is. So this problem actually tells us that they, we, they have given us a list of strings. And we have to uh, combine these anagrams into one string and then return back string of strings in the end as a result. So let's see how we can do this. The first thing that we are going to need to do is we need uh, the dictionary. A dictionary where uh, our, we have a key and value uh, arrangement where our value will be a list. So let's go back to my notepad. Okay. So what we need is I'm going to take the example that's example one. Uh, and let's see I need a dictionary uh, a dictionary where my key is something and my value is actually a list so dictionary of uh, value as a list so let's see uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go through my strings list so I go through my strings list I'm here I get the string eat let me store that as an s okay I get eat. Second thing I'm going to do is create a list. I'm going to create a list with uh, of length 26 and I'm going to initialize it to zero. So I created a list that is count for me and then I am going to initialize it to zero. Let me do that real fast here. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if you guys know what is the unicode of a character, we are going to use that particular knowledge to implement this. So what a unicode character is, so basically uh, we are going to use our ordinal function in Python. So ordinal function of a particular character gives you an in unicode code. Uh, for example, uh, ORD of A is actually 97. So this way you get the ordinal of uh, the Unicode code of A and we are going to use that logic. So if you go down the line, so ORD of B would be 98, ORD of C would be 99, ORD of D would be 100, so, so on. So what we have to do is uh, once we have the string with us, so we have eat, we are going to go through each of the letter in that string. So suppose we have E. We are going to calculate ORD of E minus ORD of A. So ORD of E minus ORD of A actually comes out to be 4. Uh, so once we have 4 in our count array, we are going to increment it. So we are going to increment our 0 to actually 1. This will help us keep track of which elements occurred and how many times did they occur. Now we go to the next letter a we calculate ORD of a minus ORD of a which actually becomes zero so we increment our 
<clears throat> 0 to 1. Next thing would be to calculate ORD, which is uh, the next character is T. So we calculate ORD of T minus ORD of A. ORD of T minus ORD of A actually is 19. So we have 19 here and then we update our ORD of T right here to 1. It's the end of the string. So once we have the end of the string, what we have to do is we are going to convert this count list into a tuple. So it will be something like, you know, when you convert it into a tuple, it would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then and then bunch of uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then t would be 1, and then again 0, 0, 0, 0, and then this. So it will basically be a tuple um, where it will have 26 uh, characters. And we are going to take that and save it as our key of the dictionary. So this particular thing is going to be here. So we have one and then one zero. So this tuple and uh, in our list, we are going to push this particular string. So we are going to push it. So we are going to make a association, right? So whenever we calculate that count, imagine if we have we have eat. Once we get 8, it will be the same count. And when we append to it, our 8 will be appended right next to eat. That's the logic that we are going to use to, you know, solve this problem. So eat is done. Let's go to the next string that we have. The next string we have is t. We get t. And we, once we process this new, we get this new uh, string in the list of strings. We again create a new list called count and then initialize that to zero. So I'm going to initialize all the elements to zero. Going through each and every letter. Now going going to T. T ordinal of T minus A is 19. We know that. So we are going to update it to 1. Next is E. Ordinal of E uh, minus A is what? Is E minus A is 4. So we are going to update this to 1 and then we get a ordinal of a minus a is again one a uh, zero so we are going to update this our uh, first position of zeroth element to one we reach the end of the uh, string so we actually convert this count to a tuple now do you uh, if you look at it t is actually an anagram of eat and if you look at the count it's the same the count uh, list we have in terms of t is the same as in terms of eat. So when we actually append it in our dictionary, what our dictionary is going to do is it's going to look for this key. If that key already exists, then it is just going to append it here. Since we are using a dictionary uh, default list, um, it's going to append it uh, to the end. So our t gets appended to this list. The next thing is stand. When we get tan, we have now tan here. We then create a count list initialized to zero. So it is going to be zero. Uh, t, ordinal t minus a would be, uh, let's actually remove this. Ordinal of t minus a uh, would be again 19. So remove this update it to one in at 19th index then we have a a would be here so update it to one and then n ordinal of n minus a is actually what is it uh, i actually pre-wrote this so that i don't have to calculate it again and again so it's 13 so it's gonna update it to 130 and we have reached the end of the list so we are going to convert this count list into a tuple of tuple of 0, 0, 0, you know, at nth position it will be 1 and then 0, 0, 0, t will be 1 and then 0, 0, 1. So I'm going to create a new, so since that key doesn't exist in the dictionary, it will create a new uh, val, a key and it will create a new key with this particular uh, tuple. It will create that and then it will have the value as tan. So we have tan here. Okay, let's go to the next variable. The next, sorry, the next string. The next string is eight. We have eight. 
now we again create a count list once we have that where is it okay initialize it to zero okay now initialized it to zero ordinal of a minus a is actually one mark that as one um and then t so mark ordinal of t minus a which is 19 so mark this as one and then at last e so mark e as one convert this count into a tuple once i do that uh what happens is 8 is also an anagram of t and the count uh, tuple is going to match the first thing that we inserted so it is going to append to the existing list so it is going to be 8 here go to the next variable which is nat now we have nat so let's update everything we are going to create we are going to have nat as a string initialized my count string to zero i get ordinal of n minus ordinal of a which is 13 so my th uh, 13th is incremented by one next is a my a would be, uh, my zero position will be incremented by one and then lastly t my t would be incremented by one so once i have that my i'll uh, convert it into a tuple my tuple is going to match the second entry here because nat is actually an anagram of a uh, tan and when i create this count tuple it's going to match this so it will append nat here okay now let's go to the last one bat i get bat i am going to again update everything i have bat as a string my count uh, list will be initialized to zero go through every uh, letter from my string b update e to one i get a update zero index to one i get t update the tth element to one and uh, since uh, it will create a tuple it will create a couple of you know a a one one and then zero and then a bunch of zeros and then t would be one and then a bunch of zeros so this is the tuple now this tuple doesn't really exist as one of our keys so it will create a new entry and then assign it to that we go back to our strings we we reach the end of the strings in the end what we have to do is we have to return our dict dot values once i do return dict dot values what it does is it returns a list so it will be something like a list of lists and then this uh, lists will be eat and then this list will be nat and tan and this list will be bat and that is the answer that we are seeking so if you look at the uh, solution here it will be bat nat and tan and eight eat and t so that's the solution guys i hope this uh, explanation helped let's try and write some code now <coughs> Okay, so uh, I'm going to start with my dictionary. So my dictionary would be um, my collections dot default oops, default dict and that would be a list. Um, then I go through every string inside strings. So for S uh, in STRS, which is strings. Uh, I create the list first so my count list is actually initialized to 0 and it is of length 26 then I go through each of this each of the letters inside the strings so for every letter in s uh, I am going to update my count uh, list so it will be my count would be uh, ORD of my uh, ORD of my letter 
minus ORD of A. So that's what we did. That's how we came to know the uh, index, right? So and increment that by one. So every time we encounter uh, a letter, we are going to subtract that with my ordinal A and then increment it to one, increment that particular position to one. In the end, uh, what I'm going to do is I have to append it. So I'm going to create a tuple out of my count list and then I'm, this is my key and I'm, my value, I have to append it to my list, right? So I'll do append and then append my S. My S would be my value because each string I have to append it to the list so that I can return it later. So that's what I append and then in the end, at last I do return my D dot values. So that's all, that's really easy, you know, once you have to, you know all the steps, that's all we need. So let's try and run this. Okay, it's running, let's submit it. Okay, I think I have to maximize this. Yeah, so it was submitted uh, and it is accept, this solution is accepted. I can submit it again though. Yeah, so this was uh, submitted and accepted. Let's talk about the space and uh, time complexity of this problem. So the time complexity, if you look at it, is for every uh, S in strings, so every string in strings. So suppose we have N strings in there. So this would be N. And then we are exploring each letter inside that string. So uh, the letter would say, suppose, of length K. So the time complexity here would be NK. Uh, and the space complexity would also be nk since we are storing it in a default dictionary. So let me uh, quickly tell you uh, what I mean by when I say it's going to be nk. So if you look at this particular input that we have, here it's uh, the length of this uh, strings list would be n. And then each string is of length k. So this will be nk and uh, the uh, dictionary that we are using to store this uh, result is also storing, you know, all the letters inside, all the letters and uh, <coughs> and the dictionary that we are using is also storing the entire result. So the time complexity and space complexity are the same and they are n of k, uh, nk, sorry. So that was the problem. Uh, if you like my videos, give it a thumbs up and comment on it. That really helps my channel. If you like uh, to get updates on my upcoming videos, you can click the subscribe button. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.